We're on our class number 49. It's the last class for quiz number 12. Our goal is to identify the factors contributing to gravitational field strength and calculate gravitational field strength. So gravitational field strength is a, another word for little g. So if we look at this equation here, g equals fg over m. We've used this before for the acceleration due to gravity, where little g is the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared. Little g also represents gravitational field strength, which is measured in newtons per kilogram. Keep in mind that newtons per kilogram and meters per second squared are equal to each other. Um, just to kind of show you where that idea comes from. We know that a newton is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Force, mass, acceleration, force equals mass times acceleration. So if we divide both sides by kilograms, we get that a newton per kilogram equals a meter per second squared. Right? So we know that those are equal to each other. It's just basically two different ways to describe the same ratio. Okay? Acceleration due to gravity is the ratio of force to mass. Gravitational field strength is the ratio of the force an object feels, the force of gravity an object feels, to its mass. So let's calculate little g. Again, little g is gravitational field strength. It is also acceleration due to gravity. So we know its value on Earth. We know its value is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's say you have a person standing on Earth. And I think the students in the room in this class were 70 kilograms. Students at home, we said you'd be 80. Uh, basically, the first thing I said was find the force of gravity between you and the Earth. So in order to do that, you have to well write down your equation, fg equals g, m1, m2 over r squared. You have to figure out what each of those variables are. We know big G. M1, we'll call that the mass of the Earth. M2, we'll call that u. It doesn't matter which one's m1 and m2. Just make sure you uh, have both of them there. And r, r is not zero. A lot of people think, oh, if you're on Earth's surface, the, the distance between you and the Earth is zero. But it's actually not. It's the distance between you and the Earth's center, which is the radius of the Earth, 6.3 times 10 to the sixth. So if you were to plug all of those in, you would get that the force of gravity you feel is 786.4 newtons. Okay, that would also be your weight. Okay, same thing. Force of gravity and weight are the same thing. Then use the equation g equals fg over m, and you get 7, or excuse me, you get 9.8 newtons per kilogram or 9.8 meters per second squared. Newtons per kilogram, you can kind of see it there. Um, it actually doesn't matter which mass you used, if you use 70 or 80 or any of them, because we know that the acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass. So why do we need this 80? What do we do with it? What do you mean it doesn't matter? We, we multiplied by it. We did. We multiplied by 80 here to find the force of gravity. Then notice here how the next step, we just divided by 80. So it is independent of the excel, excuse me, of the mass of the object on the planet. Okay. So how the gravitational field strength change, little g, if the Earth were more massive? So there are different ways to go about doing this one. This is like the longer but more reliable way to do it. So if the Earth were more massive, the force of gravity between the Earth and the objects would increase. So if the mass of the Earth, excuse me, if the mass of the Earth increases, the force of gravity increases. Then using this equation, if the force of gravity increases, little g increases as well, the gravitational field strength. Now, how would the mass of the Earth change if the mass of an object on it were to change? So we know that we just established that, yes, the force of gravity would increase if an object on the Earth's surface had a greater mass, but we would then divide by that mass. Therefore, it is independent, and that's nice old independent of mass of object on surface. How the gravitational field strength, again, realize I'm not talking about gravitational force, I'm talking about gravitational field strength. Okay, you do not affect the Earth's gravitational field strength. You feel the, the gravitational field, but you don't affect the strength of the gravitational field. C so says, how would the gravitational field strength change as the Earth at the Earth's surface? How, excuse me, how would the gravitational field strength at the Earth's surface change if the Earth were larger, meaning it had a bigger radius, but the mass were kept the same? So basically, if the Earth got bigger, but its mass didn't change. Well, if R gets bigger, Fg gets smaller. We know that inverse square relationship. As R gets bigger, Fg gets smaller. Therefore, if Fg gets smaller, we know that the gravitational field strength must get smaller as well. And questions 
Question D, if you were farther away, be the same deal. If you're farther away, your R increases, FG goes down, therefore little g goes down. Gravitational field strength, basically all you have to know about gravitational fields is that in order to represent them, you just draw arrows in the direction that an object with mass would go. In this case, if this were the Earth, let's say, or the Sun, or any object with mass, the gravitational field lines would point straight at it, towards its center. Not, they wouldn't go inside, though. And it's important to know that the denser the field lines are, the stronger the field. So if there's a lot of gravitational field lines, it is stronger than if there were fewer. And here are some extra practice questions here, the answers to them. Um, part of your homework was to complete them and submit them with all the work shown. All right, folks, have a great day. And uh, good luck.